The Anchor Solex C300. Is it the best portable, compact sized portable power station on the market? Well, today, hopefully we're gonna find out. I'm gonna give you guys a complete breakdown review of what this thing has to offer, some of the features that it has. I'll run some tests so you can see what it can power. And then I'll just give my review and thoughts at the end in case you're thinking about getting it. As far as what you get in the box, you get your different manuals. You actually get a warranty card as well, five-year warranty, but this shows you how to use it. And then you also get a wall outlet charging cable, and then you get the power station itself. And now I just wanna go over the main internal components of the battery, and then I'll show you guys all around this power station. And so this power station is a 288 watt portable power station. And so it's kind of similar to like the EcoFlow River 2 or River 3, kind of in the 250 watt range. This one is 288 watts, so it's a little bit bigger. It is an LFP battery, lithium iron phosphate, which, which is what all the big brands are using now because they're some of the most efficient and safe batteries out there. And so it is nice that it has that type of battery inside it. And with that type of battery chemistry, you're getting up to 3000 plus battery life cycles to degrade on to 80%. So if you did use this every single day, it should be able to last a decade at least. And you still have the five year warranty at the beginning as well, but that's just to degrade it down to 80%. So it should actually last quite a bit longer than that as well. Now, as far as how much power this can actually output, this has a 300 watt max AC output and it can surge up to 600 watts, which is pretty awesome for a power station this small. Now this is a lot more of a portable power station, so it's not gonna power you know, a lot of the bigger items in your house, like refrigerators and things like that. But it is gonna do a great job at, you know, TVs, projectors, small blenders if you're camping, and it's gonna do a great job at, you know, drones, uh, phones, laptops, all of those portable things that you'd need on the go. When you look at the front here, we have three three-prong AC outlets, and that's gonna have that max output of 300 watts. Up here, we also have three USB-Cs, which I actually think is super nice because, you know, everything's pretty much going to USB-C now, and so I would rather have more USB-Cs than USB-As. You do get one USB-A as well. And on here in the fine print, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see right here, one of the USB-Cs is 15 watts and then the other two are 140 watts, which is a lot of output and that's gonna be able to fast charge your devices very fast. However, in order to be able to get the 140 watts of output, you're going to need a specific cable for that that's able to handle that. And so if you have that cable, this is a great option here because you're gonna be able to power your laptop or phone you know, super fast with that. And then right here, if you slide this thing up, it is pretty cool that you can just slide this up like this and you have a little cover. It says solar on it. This right here is the solar input. So you can actually charge this thing up either via an outlet with the cable that it comes with, or you can actually get a solar panel and charge this thing up completely with solar. And then you can also charge it via type C with one of the type C inputs right there as well. Although it's going to take a little bit longer to charge via type C rather than, you know, just plugging it into the outlet. Now, speaking of charging, to charge this up, you actually plug it in on the side right here. So you use the included cable that it comes with and you're gonna be able to charge from zero to 80% in 50 minutes, which is super fast for a power station of this size. I think to 100%, it's about an hour, hour and 10 minutes, which is pretty similar to the River 2 and River 3 as well. But you know, being able to charge this thing up and use it right away after an hour, that is awesome. Or 50 minutes even to 80%, that is awesome. And the ability to actually use solar as well is gonna be great to have for camping trips and just take it with you on the go as well. Now with that solar input, you're gonna have a max solar input of 100 watts. And so Anchor recommends to get one of their 100 watt solar panels. However, you can use one of the 60 watt panels as well. But if you wanna charge it the fastest, if you do have that 100 watt panel, you're gonna be able to charge this thing up to 80% battery in about two and a half hours, which is pretty awesome. That's fairly fast. You know, if you are camping or in the outdoors, you know, you could be charging this thing up in the morning or just during the day and then at nighttime or just throughout the day, you're gonna be able to have power to charge your devices and use this thing, which is pretty awesome. Now going over here to the screen, you have your power button right here. To start it, you wanna hold it down for about three seconds. Once you actually turn it on, then you can just click it. And as you can see, you have your battery level percentage. So it shows 65%. And once you start plugging things in here, it'll actually update and it'll show you how many watts are being output. When you charge it, how many watts are being input, which I'll show you guys here in a little bit. But it is nice that they have a little screen there as well. Now, if you want to use your different outlets, if you wanna use you know, your AC input or output right here, you do have to click this button right here and the light turns on. As you can see, the AC output turns on. And then if you do wanna use your DC power, you click this button over here and then you can use all of your different USB-Cs, USB-As and the car charger as well. Now, one other cool feature about this, which I actually really like is that they have, they included a light in here, which is really nice because of how small this is. You know, if you did take this with you camping and stuff like that, it could almost be used as a lantern as well. So to turn it on, you just click it right here. If you click it again, it'll go a little bit brighter. If you click it again, it'll go a little bit brighter. And then if you click it again, it'll turn it off. If you hold it down for a couple seconds, it'll actually turn on SOS mode as well. And then if you click that, it'll turn off again. So that's a really cool feature they have as well. Now going over here, the rest of the power station on the side, you have this little kind of clip, 
where you can clip on like a lanyard so you can hook it onto your backpack or you know you can fit a carabiner in there you know if you're if you're going on a hike you can just hook this thing on and that's really cool they have that as well and then you also have this handle that makes it super easy to carry around as well now speaking about how heavy this is i'll put it on the scale so you guys can see this weighs nine pounds so only nine pounds which is pretty awesome so it is super light it's going to be easy to take with you on the go as well so that's pretty much all the features around the power station itself now i just want to run some tests so you can see you know what this thing can actually power so let's get into it so the first test i wanted to show you guys is just the charging so i have it plugged in right now to an outlet and it's supposed to have a max ac input or wall charging input of 330 watts so right now as you can see we have it charged it is actually charging at 335 watts. It's actually a little bit more, but yeah, so that definitely passed the test. It's definitely inputting 330 watts. It's actually inputting a little bit more. So you should be able to charge this up, as you can see right here in about, it says 0 .4, 0 0.4 of an hour. So I think that is pretty accurate to get it from zero to 80%. You can charge it in about 50 minutes or you should be able to. So now for this test, I just wanted to show you guys how many you know devices you can charge. You can charge a lot of different devices at the same time. Most likely, you know, the way I use this, I use only charge a couple devices at the same time, but you can if you want charge a lot. Right now I have these headphones being charged. As you can see, I have this phone being charged right here, as you can see, being charged. And then we also have this tablet being charged as well at the same time. So with this all running, as you can see, the tablet is also charging. We're using about 56 watts. Actually, it went up 65 watts and it's able to run that continuously. And with all those plugged in, we're gonna be able to, this power station has about 4.1 hours remaining. So, you know, it's not using a ton of output right now, so it's probably gonna take a while for these to charge. So it's able to handle all this for no problem and for about, you know, four -ish hours, you're gonna be able to charge your phone, you know, completely. You should be able to charge your tablet completely as well, you know, and even your headphones as well. If you just did your phone, I wanna say you'd be able to charge this up eight or so times, I wanna say. Um, it could be more, it could be less, but I think around there or so. so it is able to charge those devices, no problem at all. Pretty awesome to see. And then another test I wanted to show you guys is just with the TV. This is a 55 inch TV. So I have it plugged in right now. We got the AC power turned on. So now I'm gonna turn it on and we'll see what happens. There we go. So the TV turned on. Let's see if it updates right here. It looks like it's using about 21 watts, 36 watts. And look at that it's able to run now it's saying 84 watts so there we go back to the main menu it's using about 85 watts it's saying right now 85 watts 84 watts and with 98 percent battery we're going to be able to use it for about three ish three hours it updates you know when the when the wattage change changes but about three hours so this is cool to know you know if you didn't want to run a projector or a tv um, you know, even like a computer or something like that, you should be able to run it no problem at all with this portable power station. And then another test I wanted to show you is with a blender. This blender uses about, I want to say like 250 to 300 watts. So it should be a good test of the maximum output of 300 watts. So I'm going to start it. There's different power modes. So I'm going to turn it on and then we'll see what happens. So here we go. Turn on the power. There's low mode right here. Let's see how many watts it's using. It looks like it's using about 200 watts. So that's the lowest mode. It's able to handle it. No problem at all. It's going to be medium. Medium. Should go up to 240. I don't know. The highest mode might be the highest mode. The highest mode is. Now it's at 300. Okay, so 300. Looks like it's staying at 300. So sweet, that was actually a perfect test. This pretty much uses exactly 300, maybe a little bit more. Um, now it's staying under 300. So, all right, let's turn this off. So it's actually good to see. So this, this power station, definitely the 300 max output, it works. It was able to handle that blender, no problem at all. And now I'm actually gonna add a little bit more power and see what happens. All right, so I actually added another little blender. This blender uses about like 160 watts. So it should be well over that 300 max output. Um, but I think what's going to happen is these blenders can actually use, um, they can actually still work with less power. And so I think what's going to happen is, is it's basically going to draw less power, but the power station is still going to run them. So as you can see right now, it's at 137 watts. So it should be well over 
300 watts when we go to the high mode on the blender. So I'm going to turn the blender on now. Now they're both going. And let's see what it says. Let me put it to medium. It's still going. Now we're at... Let's put it on the high mode. It's over... It actually says 269, so it's actually below 300 watts. I don't know if you guys can hear that because of my microphone, but what actually happened is the smaller blender actually got way quieter, and so it started using less power. And so what actually happens with certain devices like toasters or you know, um, or blenders is they can actually still run with less power. So what the power station did is it actually kept it under 300 watts while still being able to run both. Uh, just the blenders had less power, so they, they probably wouldn't be able to blend blend up as much stuff you know, or, or as, as powerful but they were still able to work. So that was pretty cool to see, you know, still able to run both, even though technically they usually use more, you know, over 300 watts each. Um, they were able to lower the power output and still run uh, both of them at the same time. So that's, that was pretty cool to see. Here's just a last test for you guys. I wanted to show you guys this toaster. This one actually uses over 700 watts, so I don't think it's gonna work. I just wanna show you guys the overload protection. So I'm pretty sure this is just gonna overload um, and just turn off. So I don't think it's going to work just because it's over that, you know, 600 watt surge. So I'll plug it in right here and we'll see what happens. I got the AC power turned on right here. And now let me turn the screen on and then let's put it down the side. And oh, yep. It looks like it switched off right away. So it's actually cool to know. So yeah, if you do plug something in that's over, you know, 300 watts and the surge is, you know, over 600 watts, it's just going to turn off and it's going to have that overload protection, which is actually good to see. All right, so after all my tests and everything, honestly, I think this is a really solid option for a portable, small, compact power station. Now, if you want to power things up like refrigerators and things like that or portable AC units and just be able to have a lot more power, then definitely recommend getting, you know, a bigger power station, maybe, you know, Anchor Solix C1000 or something like that. But for a portable, small, compact power station, this is an awesome option, in my opinion. I will say now that this one has come out, there are some other ones out there now that have, you know, a little bit bigger power output or at least surge than this one. But I still feel like this is an awesome option for how small it is and just the size of it. I do like how it has kind of like a small rectangular design rather than kind of the smush design. Just because I feel like it's easier to kind of fit in your backpack and take it with you. Um, and it's just more comfortable to carry in my opinion. It also has the light, which a lot of smaller power stations in this range just don't have. So I think that's cool as well for camping in the outdoors. And overall, yeah, it's just a solid power station in my opinion. And it charges fairly quickly as well. So you're going to be able to use it really fast. It would be nice if it had a little bit bigger solar output. But for the most part, 100 watts, you know, to be able to charge it up in about two and a half hours. That is fairly quick as well. So overall, really solid power station in my opinion. Definitely recommend checking it out if you're looking for more of a compact, portable power station.